Okay, so my name is uh, Genevieve FT. Um, I'm an artist in the game industry and also a freelance illustrator on the side. Okay, I will talk a little bit about my journey as an artist. Maybe like a lot of you, I started, uh, I studied 2D animation uh, in Montreal at Cégep du Vieux Montréal, which is a little bit like Sheridan's, but for Montrealer. But it's... <laughs> Don't laugh. <laughs> 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 but it's much more uh, smaller, like we were about 25 graduates. Um, like it was a three year program. Uh, we did a short film. And when I finished, I didn't know what I wanted to do. I was not ready for um, the, the work industry. So um, I went to Concordia University uh, in film animation, which um, which more artsy school. Uh, I wouldn't suggest it to someone I want to learn uh, animation, but it was great for me because I could uh, learn about a bunch of different stuff. I could, I did like puppet animation, um, abstract ink, film, uh, and cut out paper stuff. And at the end, I kind of realized that I didn't like to animate at all, <laughs> like after six years of animation school. And, and that what I prefer was more like drawing and concept characters um, and storyboards. Uh, so when I graduated, I started working freelance for a game startup, which was based in uh, San Francisco. Uh, when I was working for Montreal, so that was great. And I had like a studio space where I was working with other freelancer. So that was another vibe and I learned um, that there was other people doing art and like other than my schoolmates. <laughs> so <laughs> that was fun. Um, the company was great. Uh, I, because I was working freelance, I had a lot of creativity left uh, on my end. And so basically uh, I could explore a lot of things. And um, well, I learned also how to uh, work in the game industry because I didn't know how to make like assets and animate for a game industry. So yeah, I did like everything basically because I was the only artist. So I did like animation, FX, um, uh, background, everything. Uh, but unfortunately, uh, the company closed after like a year that I was there. So um, it closed like on January 2nd. Uh, so I started working freelance. <laughs> well, in fact, I didn't have the choice really because um, the, like no company were, were hiring like on January 2nd. So I just started to, to take contract work. Um, it went well. I worked uh, for like a year and a half as a freelance artist. Uh, but yeah, so I learned a bunch of new things uh, as a freelance. Like I learned how to deal with uh, clients. Uh, like promoting my work, uh, looking for new clients, um, also doing all the invoice, the tax stuff, which was like, uh, was not fun. <laughs> <laughs> and, but um, after a while, it was like, I got some uh, problem, like I didn't get any enough money. And so I couldn't pay both rent for my artist studio and my house, basically. Uh, so I just brought back my studio at home. So from there was a little bit like downhill, like uh, freelance alone at home, like full time. It's not a good idea. It's, <laughs> it's extremely lonely and it was a lot of stress to deal with all the money and everything. So at some point I was just like, okay, I'll just try to look for a full time job. And this is how I started working at a game company uh, in Montreal, which is called uh, Ibernome Creation. Uh, it's kind of small company compared to all the other one in Montreal. It's about uh, 150 employees. Uh, we work, we mostly do client work. We don't work on any IP or anything. Uh, and I'm working uh, in the pitch section. So I'm not working, uh, I'm not making the game really. I'm like, let's say a client come up to, to us and just say, we want to make like um, a platformer um, for like kids from eight to 10 short range but yeah <laughs> and <laughs> uh, it's like for boys and it will be released on iPhone so basically uh, we try to find a good uh, game idea and we make a few visual concepts and we put all this in a document and the, the boss of the company basically just pitched the idea to the client so that's my job doing like the concept for the future game 
so that's really fun because it's, uh, it's changing a lot, it's challenging. Um, and we have to be extremely fast because a pitch can go from like a four hour pitch to like a, a month pitch basically. We never spend too much time on a project, which is great because I'm really not really good about like working a long time on a project. So, <laughs> uh, and it's fun. And um, yeah, we have to deal with different kind of clients too. Like we're working some time with uh, like, we have to make a pitch for Gears of War and after we have to make a Princess Disney pitch. So <laughs> we have to be able to go fast on our, um, and changing art style and stuff. So it's fun, a lot of learning. And what's great about nine to five job is now like when I come back home, uh, I don't think about work anymore. And basically um, uh, I have all this time to take freelance work or uh, work on my personal project. I'm still working uh, freelance on the side. And uh, well, depending, sometimes it's personal work or freelance work. Uh, in the past like two years, I work with uh, fun clients like uh, Boom Studio. I did a cover for Adventure Time and Bravest Warriors. And I did some uh, guest comic for Garfield here. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I, the Garfield are really fun because they like basically let me do whatever I want. And like I did this pinup of Garfield and they liked it so much that they made a comic out of it. Well, just like a 10 page comic, but that was fun. And <laughs> I work also with uh, Archie comic this year, which was great because like uh, when I was younger, I just love Archie so much. So that was like a little dream come true. And in the past two years, I've also worked on, uh, I like self-published small sketchbook of just line drawings that I did in my free time basically. So yeah, so that's it basically for what like I did so far. Uh, now I want to talk to you about uh, how to push to get become a better artist. So um, I used to be pretty bad at drawing. <laughs> so this is drawing I did like in my first and second year of Sejab. So yeah, <laughs> it got much better, <laughs> hopefully. Um, so I want to give you a few tips on um, how to like get better at drawings and how to motivate yourself basically to get better. If you want to get better, just practice. That will be the best like, thing I can say to anyone who want to get better at drawing. Just practice every time you have. Um, there's a study that said that you have to work 10,000 hours to master something. And so 10,000 hours is about like two years and a half if you work every day, eight hours a day. So no one does that. <laughs> so basically it's, around like five years, I'd say. And if I look at um, like what I went through, it's about that like five or six years to get to a point where I was just like, okay, I don't suck that much. Like, I, I'm like, <laughs> I, well, I'm like credible when I uh, can uh, talk about my art. Like, so around 10,000 hours. And in the same study that uh, proves that 10,000 hours, it's, uh, the, the kind of time you have to spend to master something. It says that you have to fall in love with uh, the practice, um, like to get through all those hours, basically. So um, uh, basically fall in love with uh, the practice. It's to just draw whatever you like. Um, like a lot of people draw because um, like they kind of feel they have to. Like they, they will draw because they want to get better, but it's not, they don't necessarily do it for themselves. They don't draw because they like it. They draw because they need to get better or they draw certain things because, because they think the industry wants to see that. And for sure you will get, if you don't like it, for sure you will get tired of it because you, you don't draw something that makes you happy basically. So, um, I would say to anyone, just draw whatever you like and like master this thing that you like. I don't know if you like drawing trees, <laughs> like just keep drawing trees and make the best trees ever. And people will come to you to have trees drawn by you. 
yeah, yeah, people want trees <laughs> all the time. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, just make the best trees ever and people will come up to you just for that, basically. Like, don't, don't care about what the industry is looking for. That's my point. <laughs> How I fell in love with, like, practicing so much is that I started making calendar a few years ago. I did uh, four calendars. Um, I kind of start, uh, stopped at some point because when I was working freelance, I had too much work and it was like I wanted to make a good product and didn't have enough time to make a good product. So uh, I stopped, but for four years in a row, I made calendars. Uh, it was great because I had a goal. So every year I needed to make like at least 12 illustrations. Uh, it also developed my style because like I started doing calendars when I was um, at Concordia and I was still searching for for what I wanted to do. And um, so I was like, okay, I'll make a pinup calendar because I like drawing pinups. And so it developed my style and I got much faster too at doing it. It also developed my branding. Like a lot of people know me because I do pinup and basically it all started from those calendars. Um, and I improved a lot because like, if you do at least like 12 illustration every year, for sure you will evolve at some point because well, you're drawing and you're practicing. And the most important, well, it was a lot of fun for me. And so I have a few examples of, so this was my 2010 calendar, so it's all right. <laughs> it's okay. Uh, so 2011, like, there's still problem with anatomy there. Like, <laughs> the end is completely backward. <laughs> 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 no, I, but that's why I took this one. <laughs> uh, so 2012 got better. Like I added some saturation at some point. I kind of figure out how it worked. So yay, <laughs> colors. <laughs> and 2013, which looks a little bit more like what I'm doing right now, but I still got better. I think, hopefully. Still, if you want to get better, um, always push for improvement. Um, so basically, every time you finish a drawing, uh, illustration, animation, comics, whatever, uh, always analyze what you did. Like, note what you did good, note what you did bad, no note like what you should uh, make for in your next um, project. And also to get a better critical eye, analyze other artists' work. Um, like, if you have this artist that you really like, how he renders, like, try to analyze how he does it. And also um, try to um, try to add it in your personal work. Like uh, if you like the this artist, how he does the lighting, try to see how he does it, why you like it so much, and try to include it in your process, basically. So always analyze your work, other people's work, the world, everything. And next thing is to have goals. It's extremely important because if you don't have goals, basically, well you will stay at the same place. <laughs> um, so you have to think, what's your ultimate goal? Like when, like in a few years or like at your summum, what's your ideal position? Like let's say if your goal is to make, a, like to live out your webcomic. Well, you have to also set a few smaller goals that will help you go through uh, this bigger goal. So you want to make you want to make a living on your webcomic. Well, basically, you will start by uh, making a website for your webcomic. So that's a smaller goal. After you have to uh, publish regularly your comic, so that's another small goal. Maybe after a year, you will say, okay, we'll publish a book out of it. So it's all smaller goal that leads you to your ultimate goal, basically. Okay, so now. I've been working for about 10 months full time and I've been working on my personal project, working on client work. So basically this is what I've learned so far. So it's not like exact science or anything, <laughs> but it's just tips that I can give you if you want to start working on your uh, personal project or want to take freelance. So organization, <laughs> we're all very good artists at organization, right? <laughs> So, um, well, no, we're not, <laughs> okay, that was my point. But if you, uh, <laughs> uh, 
if you want to make like 40 hours a week and then work on other stuff at night, basically you have to get organized. That's the only way. Uh, so make to-do list. <laughs> uh, I really love making to-do list. I tried a bunch of um, application on my phone uh, of like time management and stuff. It's just not working for me. But then a friend told me about bullet journal, which is basically to write everything on paper, like in the good old days. So basically, I will just write everything I need to do, like everything, like make a call, uh, go to the movies, uh, finish this contract, everything goes in that book. I don't know how, why it works so well, but it's extremely working for me. And I will suggest you go on their website, it's called bulletjournal.com, and they explain everything, like, like it's a guy, I think, who just made this, this website and just explain everything, how he does it. I'm much more messy than what he says, but he has a really good technique of like writing everything down. Um, and what's really cool about it is that basically you can just go through the months and just say, wow, I, I've done e all of this. It's very cool. And it's like a little bit motivating to see like all you've done through like those few months. So make to-do list, it's always important. Uh, deadlines. So if you're working full time and you want to take freelance job, I had to learn this the hard way, but basically plan a few extra days when you're working, uh, when you want to take a contract, like never take the minimum time it will take you to make this illustration or whatever you're making. But um, like make sure you plan a few days and maybe sometimes double the, this time because uh, if you say, okay, I can make it in a week, but this is the minimum I can take. Like I will work every day a week on just on this contract and um, I kind of lost my thought there, but uh, yeah, <laughs> uh, like if you're working every day, well, if you're a Photoshop crash, like you will be late. If you get sick, you will be late. So, and you don't want to be the person that writes the email like, yeah, sorry, I will be late. My Photoshop crashed. It's like the, it's like the dog excuse, like the dog ate my homework. It's the same thing. <laughs> so basically, always plan a few more days. Like if I. I know I can make it in, in a week. I usually plan two weeks just so I know that I can go out with my friends that day and then I can just take a day off there and after that I just plan what I need to do. It works better this way. Oh, and if you're working freelance, uh, uh, no, if you're working on your personal project, uh, make sure to give yourself a deadline basically, just a small goal that you, otherwise you will just uh, watch TV and not work on your things. And also think long term, like when you're too tired to work and you don't want to take freelance job, you don't want to work on your personal project, uh, think of what you can do to help yourself later on. Basically like uh, organize your stuff, uh, your tax stuff, um, research your next project, uh, like cook a bunch of food for later, but just make sure that when you're in a downtime, um, make sure you organize things that will help you later uh, because when you'll be like with a bunch of deadline maybe you don't have time to organize your, your taxes or you don't have time to cook so if there's things already prepared and it'll be just easier so that's it on organization now you have to remember like, it's just drawing you, uh, you can't work like 24-7 and if you, s you don't work one night, like no one will die. Uh, <laughs> like you know, sometimes people are stressing too much about that, but it's like we're supposed to have fun. We're drawing, so it's good. But you can work 24-7. Uh, you have to take the time, like you have to take some time off. You have to like go out with your friend. You have to do exercise, you know. You just can't work all the time forever. Um, and you also, uh, if you take freelance job, you have to learn to say no. Like I still have problem with this one, but <laughs> like you have to say no to offers. Um, like sometimes you're just too tired and you don't want like a, to burn out or anything. So just make sure to say no when you, you don't have the energy for it or just don't have the time. Because also if, um, uh, if you say yes to too much freelance and you're working full time, you can't 
do all nighters because the next morning you have to wake up and go to your work and be like productive at your work. And so you just can be productive all the time. So make sure to take some time off. And also just take freelance job that will take you closer to your uh, ultimate goal. So if you're taking a bunch of animation contracts, uh, but your goal is to uh, do illustration, it's just not working. Like just only take freelance job that will of illustration because this is what ultimately you want to do. So now this is like a to-do list of what I would like people to do, like to just like evolve as a community. So basically talk about money. Um, because we don't talk enough about money and we sometimes end up taking that weird job that don't pay you and makes you do crazy hours. Uh, but we don't, we should not be shy to talk about money basically. Uh, and if you're about to start a job and they ask you how much you, um, you want for this job, just talk about it with your friend before and just say, look, so how much do I take? Um, otherwise, like if you say, okay, I want, it, I want like 30K on this job, like the company will just be <laughs> sure, whatever. Like they'll be happy to pay you like that much basically. Um, so, um, so yeah, talk about money because if the more we will talk about it, the more we'll be informed and the more um, all the community will get better. Uh, now, give your tips and share your, um, uh, your experience basically. Uh, like don't be, don't work alone all the time. Um, uh, do like live stream, uh, share, share your experience with other people, um, just to also like evolve as a, as a community. Encourage other artists. So um, yeah, in the same way, just try to like, you know, doing likes and favorite is good, but sometimes just take the time to write a comments on people, artwork, uh, share the artwork, um, just try really to talk more with other artists and just say this, you did good on this one, I really liked it. And also if you have friends that get this awesome job, just take the time to say congratulations on this job, it's really cool, uh, you, you work hard for it, uh, like keep going because um, yeah, you need to um, like create a community with everyone and be nice and that would be like ideal world if everyone was super nice. <laughs> and work together. Uh, even if like you're working alone on a project, uh, talk about uh, your project to other people. Um, uh, like share your idea. You never know uh, if what kind of feedback you can get when you talk about a project. And just also if you want to work on a project that involves m more than one person, just talk about it. Um, make sure you're heard because if you just don't talk about it but you want to work on an uh, animation short film, uh, no one will ever know that you want to work on this with other people. So just talk about it, maybe a friend of a friend knows someone. So yeah, talk about it, encourage people and share your experience and your tips and talk about money in the next year. <laughs> Try to do that more, that would be amazing. Okay, now I have like, I wanted to record my screen and like show you my process but my photoshop was crashing every time so i just <laughs> <laughs> i just uh, basically s save all these steps i i went through okay so this is the tool i use the most basically lasso tool brush uh, on the brush i don't use any weird brush or i don't make my own brush it's pretty basic uh, if i need some texture sometime i will look online for um, what I can find, but I don't know how to <laughs> make my own brush. Uh, and I use a lot of the pen tool too. Um, when I do color work, I love to use the layer style, like the overlay, multiply, all those things, really useful. And I use a lot of clipping mask, which is the little one with the arrow, which basically you can draw in a certain uh, area like on the area that it's clipped to. 
So, okay, so I just made like a fake cover for Josie and the Pussycat just to show you. If it was a real comic cover, uh, I will have left some space on the top because uh, for the name of the comic, but it wasn't a real, so eh. So, <laughs> um, before this sketch, I did a bunch of smaller sketch, uh, like basically stick figures, uh, just to see the composition where I wanted the character and everything. Uh, I forgot to save this one, so here's the more final sketch. Uh, when I know I'm going to colors, I don't do better sketch than that. It's basic, yeah, that, that stays pretty messy. After I do a few color tests, I didn't make that much, but yeah, a few ones. After I just basically do backgrounds, and after I do flat colors on the character. After a few details. Uh, oh, the microphone. The other character in flat color and with details. Same with the drum and the other one. Once all the flat colors are done, basically, I start doing the more shadows and light. Uh, so here's a little bit of ambience <laughs> uh, light. And here's just like a hue and saturation layer on top of everything, just to check on my, like where I want the lighting to go, basically, and where the light's uh, is going. And a little filter I add on the thumbnail, basically. I just put the filter there and saturation. After it just all, all the colors, I know they're good and everything. Just start doing the clean uh, shadows. So there. And a little bit more shadows just to make some area clearer. And here, just the light a little bit. Um, oh, so here, I put the mic blue because it was like we couldn't really see it there. So I just added a little punch so it's easy to see. I added the light in the background. And just the filters a little bit. Uh, I think just light and saturation at the end. Just make sure everything's all right. And yeah, that's it. Any questions for Genevieve? Ooh. The lady first. <laughs> um, I was wondering if you like uh, just talk about like how you before you started because I didn't realize you were working full time now in another yep. job since I last saw you. Um, mm -hmm. How did you go about like looking for clients when you started uh, working like, just straight freelance? Oh, yeah. I never, <laughs> I never really looked that much for client. I, I mostly do like promotion online. Yeah, that was kind of a lie. I never really looked for a client. <laughs> 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 I know with a lot of people I talk to, it's been more of an organic thing. It's yeah, it's more like people talk about online. people, and uh, or people write me an email and say, "Oh, I saw your work online." So, but I do a lot of uh, like I ha I have like a Twitter and Facebook and everything. So there, I I post a lot online. So I think a lot of people see it online and contact me after that mainly and after that there's uh, all clients more in Quebec that heard about me from other friends of you know just like um, my little artist community in Montreal but yeah uh, sorry <laughs> I don't <laughs> 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 yeah, did, did, yeah it answered uh, oh yep so go ahead I kind of have a boring technical question but yep. how long does something like the illustration you show us take um, oh, I'd say maybe this one, like, uh, three or four hours or something. Yep. To, like, from the sketch. But the sketch are really extremely fast, like. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. So, and after the color, yeah, it went pretty quick for this one. But depends. Sometimes it's, or sometimes the concept very hard. Like, once you get the sketch, it's pretty easy to go fast in the color. But sometimes it's just, you look so long for the good sketch that, yeah. I went pretty simple on this one. Um, how would you go about when I was talking about money there uh, charging for your work because I've, I've done a few freelance things yep. and I, I did something that took me about four months I got paid about 400 bucks for it Ooh, oh yeah I no but <laughs> oh no 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 but uh, usually I will charge a fixed amount uh, when I know it's like uh, like 
a comic cover or something, like just one illustration, I know I can charge about this much. And if I, I don't know the client, I usually will ask a little bit more because sometimes I think about the fact that uh, they will ask for retakes and everything on the job. But if it's like regular client, I have the same price I always give for like one illustration. And uh, well, the price depends on what's the, uh, like if it's for uh, like publicity or whatever, but uh, for like more than, <laughs> I don't see him. <laughs> <laughs> but when it's uh, like, for something that I know it's more than a week and there'll be like feedback and like for a game, I will never uh, take a like fixed amount because like games always take longer than they seems they will take. So yeah, I, I just found that out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you, they will just say, oh, we want a few concept for the character and in the end you end up doing all the animation and everything and you're just like, okay, <laughs> well, it's not enough money. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So yeah, but when it's those kind of situations, try to ask for a uh, hour rate, basically. Okay. Yeah, or like a week rate can kind of work too, but sometimes... Yeah. I have no idea on like any benchmark. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But that's when you go ask your friends, say, hey, you did that previously, and you can ask, or you can just ask people you don't know to, like, like let's say you could have write me an email, and I could have tell you everything, you know, well, not everything. <laughs> but yeah, sometimes just talk to people like that, you know, this artist, you know, he does this kind of work, just sending an, an email and just say, so there's this contract, they charge me this, is it enough, is it not enough? And yeah, but not 400 is not enough. No, 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 <laughs> I, I realized that after the day of doing it, I was like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but sometimes, I at some point, if you feel it's not enough, you can ask them and just say, yeah, it, it's not uh, it's not working, can we rework the, the price and everything? And if they say no, well, you say, well, maybe find someone else. <laughs> Have you ever had that experience where you've, pr you've given what you've asked for for a particular project and the clients have not always been kind of upfront because they were new or something and then you've had uh, I never had really problem with the money. I had some contract that told me I was supposed to do that and in the end I was doing something else that I hated and I just said, I like, I did what I, was supposed to do, and they asked for more, and I was just like, no, not working with you anymore. <laughs> but yeah, I never had a problem with the money. Yeah. yeah. Any other questions? Uh, any techniques you use for keeping your outlines so nice and crisp? Oh, it's the pen tool. So a pen tool is basically a kind of vector in Photoshop. Yeah, yeah. So uh, that's when I s start doing with the um, if I can show it here. Can I? Oh yeah, okay. Like when I have like the flat color like here. Uh, this is all pen tool. Well, I have a Cintiq, so after if I add like the, like there's the air detail there, it's all by end, like just free end like twirls and stuff. But uh, otherwise it's, I use a lot of the pen tool when I have big shapes to make. Yeah, again. What's the tick are you using? Um, 22 HD. Oh, I hate you. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I have that, that little uh, 12 inch. And it's yeah, I, well, I have that at work, so. Yeah, the yeah, colors on the 12 inch, though, they don't really. It's weird. Yeah, like your monitor to the 12 inch. I have like three monitors, yeah. just to, I, and I have just one with the right color, the other yeah, two yeah. are. It can be tricky. Yeah. <laughs> To get better at anatomy? Anatomy and uh, maybe more importantly to, to myself, like shape language. The what? Like a shape language? Like, like body language? Like no, the no, 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 like more like, a, like, like go to shapes for, say, like a face or a, oh. or like a certain piece of anatomy. Like okay, uh, well, anatomy, like, I did a lot of like lab drawing at school and I go to Dr. Sketchy a lot in Montreal. But uh, for 
the shape, I think it comes with when I developed my style more and more, um, it kind of came with it because like I'm, maybe I'm doing the ends my own way, but no one is really doing ends this way, you know? So, um, well, the more I guess you know the anatomy, the more it's easier to simplify it. But uh, yeah, I don't know how to answer this question. <laughs> but yeah, it's the more you will look at people, it will be easier to simplify, I guess. Trial and error. Any specific artists that you were influenced by? Uh, well, I have a yeah, a lot of like everyone inspires me. Like like, and I have tons of artists that I like. But more in the pinup art, I really like Bill Pressing and Shane Lyons and you know all the major pinup cartoon artists. Uh, but otherwise, like I, I have like favorite artists in different kind of style and different kind like of digital painting or whatever. So. <laughs> I have folders and fol folders of artists. <laughs> um, how have you found like doing your convention work on top of doing your freelance and oh, your nine to yeah. five work? Because I do I, that too. For those of you who don't know, but Genevieve <laughs> also travels to various comic conventions throughout North mm. America on top of everything else that she does. So, like, how do you how do you take that into? Uh, um, well, now I found it easier with the full time job because I can just ask for a vacation and they gave me vacation and I can just go. So I don't think about work. When I was freelance, it was tricky because I needed to manage uh, not to have certain, not to have contract in between those dates. Or if I had, I was like stressing to finish my deadlines and then go to the convention and it was more stress. But now it's going pretty well, but I don't do that much. Like I try to do maybe three, three or four per year, but pretty low. Did you find it beneficial in a sense for like making new clients? Uh, yeah, yeah, well, it's always good. There's always like uh, people coming back and ask for a contract after um, like companies. Um, I'm not sure like Boom or Archie found me through convention, but like you always talk to artists also. That, that's my favorite part when I go to convention that you can talk with uh, artists and sometimes just making friends with other artists if like the like let's say Archie say, oh yeah, we want to hire you, and an artist that works there say, oh yeah, she's good or whatever. Yeah. It's maybe easier to get the contract if, like, you're nice to other artists. <laughs> <laughs> it's important to be nice. <laughs> uh, we got time for one more question. Anybody? Yes, you back. Will you tend to cater your work when you go to a comic convention? A what? Will you will you change your work or? Uh, make specific pieces, like a little... Uh, like commissions? Yeah, well, well, you make a specific little pin-up uh, print that you would sell at a convention, or you just sell oh. whatever you have made. Like you oh, yeah, yeah, Batman okay. Con, do you have Batman pin-ups that you would do? <laughs> well, I guess, yes, if I will go to a Batman convention. <laughs> Never <laughs> happened <laughs> yet. <laughs> but... Um, well, I have a few like more superhero related uh, uh, drawings, so I usually bring more those ones. So it depends on the convention. If it's comic convention, I will bring those. Uh, if it's like CTN, uh, the animation convention in Burbank, I will just bring my personal stuff because I want to showcase more of my own things. Comic convention are more like to sell your stuff, I find. Like there's a lot of... Uh, normal people, <laughs> but like people that are not there to hire you or are not there to, um, they just want to see nice drawing and buy them. So, And they're there because they like superheroes, so if I have superhero on my table, it's just easier. But no, I never did like made a, per, uh, a specific piece just for this convention or, you know. Does it answer? Yeah. Okay. Cool. Awesome. Yay.